Hello, 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 hello. Okay, it looks like we are going live. Okay, amazing. I'm super, super excited. Tonight is going to be so much fun. We've got such an amazing presentation planned for everybody. I'm going to let everybody file in here. I can see the, the participants number just rolling up. A uh, lot, of, lot of people coming in. So this is good. If you guys can hear me, there's a Q&A button below. Go ahead and just type in yes. Yes, I can hear you, Mikkel. Okay. I want to make sure this is working before I go too, too far. I'm going to pull up this one here and we'll go like this and answer live. Awesome. So tell me, everyone, where are you guys calling in from tonight? I want to know where everybody's at. I'm sure there's lots of Canadians here. Do we have some Americans, Australians, New Zealanders, Brits? Uh, we got hundreds of people coming in right now. Yes, from Spain. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Where else? Da, 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 da. Huge uh, Toronto, uh, Merida, uh, Ontario, Canada, New Zealand. There we go. The New Zealand crew. Let's see, Toronto. All right. I think Denver, Seattle, New Hampshire, Panama. Nice. We've got a Panama person on the line. Tulsa. Uh, okay, good. I think, I think everybody should be coming in right now. And I think we can get going about 100 comments in here. So what I'm going to do is share my screen. And I hope that you guys can see it all right. I'm going to move my video over to here. And there we go. All right. So welcome, everybody. What we're going to be talking about tonight is bulletproof your future. It's going to be about a comprehensive plan B strategies for global citizens. I really want to outline for you guys. I really want to detail what goes into a perfect plan B. Okay, so a quick little bit of housekeeping. All right, um, make sure you got yourself a drink. I don't have a nice fancy drink like that tonight. I've got my water, but make sure you have your drink. Grab your spouse. If your spouse is in the other room, go and grab them, sit them down. They need to watch tonight's presentation. Super important. This is a phones off meeting. As always, turn off your phone. Don't be scrolling through uh, flake book and all of this stuff. Pay attention. It's going to be really good. And make sure to stay to the end because I got something I really want to share with you guys. I think it's going to be really, really important. So no matter what, make sure you stay till the end of the presentation. Okay. All right. So who am I and why do I get to talk about this? Well, my name is Mikkel Thorpe. I host the Expat Money Show. It's a podcast we've been doing for over seven years now. We've done close to 300 episodes, about 280 some odd episodes of the podcast. I've authored three books about living overseas and immigration. I've traveled to more than 100 countries myself. I've lived in nine countries, and I've circumnavigated the globe over 400 times. Um, I've been at this for nearly 25 years straight now. I left as a teenager. I'm, I'm Canadian by birth. I left as a teenager, and I moved overseas, and I started traveling and uh, trying out a lot of these things. I've been a guinea pig for almost 25 years going through this stuff. I get roughly 3 million or so people who read and listen to my work every single year talking about the expat and the offshore space. And I've been interviewed almost 200 times on different radio and podcast programs, including twice on my friend, the Tom Woods show, on my friend Tom Woods show. Uh, and I do this at the hobby, the family and the professional side. So as I said, I'm Canadian citizen with Danish heritage. My wife is from mainland China. We met in Germany. We got married in Africa. My daughter was born in the Middle East. My son was born in Brazil. I have houses here in Panama. I've got places. Um, in Paraguay and in Turkey and China. And I've got real estate in about eight different countries, 10 different countries. So I really do this stuff at the, at the family level, at the hobby level and the professional level. My main job is consulting with private clients. I work with high net worth families and I help them relocate their money and their wealth and their business and themselves overseas. So I really know what goes into creating a perfect plan B, all right? So that's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. So straight off the bat, what is a plan B? All right, when we say the words plan B, what are we referring to in this context? Well, a plan B is a safe place for you, your money, and your assets 
if you have to get out of Dodge quickly, all right? I'm sure we could have put a uh, slightly less polite way of saying this, but I think you know what, what I mean, all right? You have to have some type of a landing pad, not just like a house, but also bank accounts and brokerage accounts and places for your money and the structures and everything like that. It's what we're going to be talking about today. So why do we need a plan B? Why is this even necessary in today's day and age? You know, it just, maybe it was always been the case, but it really seems like the last three years that it's just absolutely irresponsible if you don't have a plan B. So why do we need this? Well, a lot of political instability, that's for sure. We've seen social unrest, especially in places like the United States last year or two years ago, you know, on the streets, just some really horrendous things that went down there. We're looking at a legit financial collapse. You know, we saw an absolute massive collapse, 2008, 2009. I think what's coming is going to make that look like child's play, unfortunately. Um, governments have been killing businesses with bureaucracy. I think that this is their new tactic. I think that they want to make things so complex. There's so many legal frameworks. There's so many laws and different things that you can get tripped up on that it's impossible not to make mistakes. So they're coming after you. They don't want you to have a business. They don't want you to be wealthy or be successful. They're purposefully collapsing businesses. We've definitely seen a lot of war, unfortunately. I am so absolutely anti-war. Um, and it's very concerning what we're seeing, you know, with the Taiwan Strait, with China and Taiwan, with what we're seeing in the Middle East, with going against Iran now, and then Russia and Ukraine, and just places like Somalia and Yemen. And it's just like all over the place is war, war, war. And it's really, really disconcerting. I know a lot of people seem to think in North America that it'll never touch them. I just don't think that's the environment we're in anymore. I think that we have to be really prepared for these things. And it's government aggression. There's no question about it. The government have turned on the people. They're coming for people. And it's just not a friendly environment. We can add in things like money printing and inflation, forced health mandates, which I won't be talking about today, but I think you understand what I mean. And then the lockdowns of closures of businesses. It's not, not a very pretty picture. There's no question about it. But your plan B is political insurance. This is what I want you to remember, okay? Your plan B is political insurance. We have insurance for our automobile in case we get into an accident. We have insurance for our house in case there's a fire or a flood or something like that. But you have to have insurance in place from your government. You can't have all your eggs in one basket on this. So what goes into a comprehensive plan B, a comprehensive plan B? What, what, what does this include? Well, it's going to have a landing pad. You know, this could be a second home, a piece of land, an apartment, something like that, somewhere that you can physically land. Um, not just the, the real estate. You also have to think about having the legal right to live in that country, right? You can't just go into a country on a tourist visa and expect that they're going to allow you to stay. They won't. So you need to have the legal right in that on that landing pad to get in there. Now, it needs to be structured securely, and we're going to be getting into some of the ways that you can go about that, but you have to have it structured securely, ideally with zero debt. You know, you don't want something on really rocky foundation. You want something really, really strong. We're going to be looking at a free flow of capital. This is moving money into the country, moving money out of the country. All right. You don't want to put money in. This is not Hotel California. You know, you can you can check in, but you can never leave. This is not what you want. Right. You want to have a free flow of capital. And we're seeing capital controls in Western countries. We're definitely seeing it with Canada. We're seeing a shadow ban right now with banking where they just keep asking for document after document after document. It's all for your protection, of course, but they just don't want to allow the money to leave the shores because there's just so many people exiting. You know, Canadians used to be 5% of my business. Then they were 50% of my business. Now they're at a, probably about 60, 70% of my business are Canadians. You know, tons of Canadians, tons of Americans, tons of New Zealanders. I don't know what's happened in New Zealand, but what an absolute mess. I got New Zealanders coming like crazy, Australians coming like crazy through this. So these are some of the reasons why. Now, when we're looking at the comprehensive plan B, it's got to be tax optimized. I don't want to take you from out of the pan and into the fire, right? I'm not the guy to talk to if you want to move to Sweden or Japan or one of these really high tax countries, okay? 
I specialize in low tax or zero tax countries. I want to make sure we put you in a better situation. Okay. Then definitely freedom of movement. We're going to get into some of the immigration and some of the ways that you can get passports and things like this, but you want to be able to move freely in the country as well as across borders and somewhere that's going to fit your lifestyle, right? As far as anybody can convince me, we have one life to live, all right? This is our chance. Enjoy yourself, spend time with your family, drink nice red wine, eat good food, and as long as you're not hurting anyone, then do whatever you want. So make sure that the country that you that you pick matches your type of lifestyle, that it's gonna give you all of those things that are important to you. Now, let's get into some of the the details on a comprehensive plan B. So when we say um, a landing pad, okay, we're talking about real estate. We're talking about a second home. Now it could be a second home that you're gonna be living in, but it could also be a piece of real estate that you're gonna use as a rental property, right? Can also make good financial sense. You know, when a client comes to work with me, it's not just about, you know, making sure that it's gonna be um, economically sound. I want it to actually make good financially sense as in generating income, you know? Like, let's say that Mikkel is totally wrong about everything, all right? Tomorrow, the world is gonna go back to gumdrops and rainbows and everything's gonna be beautiful and sunshine all day long and no problems. Everyone's gonna hold hands, throw down their weapons and everything is gonna be amazing. I would love that. I'd want that to be, that would just be fantastic. I don't think it's gonna happen, but it could happen, all right? Say that I'm completely wrong. I still want, a second home and a rental property and all of these things to make financial sense, all right? It needs to make sense from all sides. So what are we looking for in something like this? Well, it's got to be reasonably priced, right? I don't want you spending $50 million on a bug out plan. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I'd rather see money spread out a little bit. I want to make sure that you have the title deed. So you have a very strong legal basis for that property. I don't want it on a 20-year lease. I don't want it in a... Um, in a trust that's owned by a bank because the property is close to the coastline, you know, and then you have to ask permission and they got to renew it. You don't want any of that. You want a title deed for your property. You want it to be rented when you're new, not using it so you can generate some cash flow. And you need it to be in demand. You want people wanting to rent it. It has to be in a popular area, good building. Ideally, it's going to have management on site. I don't want you getting phone calls at two o'clock in the morning to go and fix a toilet and you're halfway across the world. That's no fun. Nobody wants that. It's got to be in a stable country. No point in doing this if you think that there's going to be an uprising or some of the stuff that we've seen in uh, in Peru in some of these countries. You don't want that at all. It's got to be in a stable currency so that you're not losing all of your money to inflation. And ideally, this is going to qualify you for immigration, for a residency or a citizenship. Last one on this list, and I've got another one I want to talk to you, is it will retain value. I don't want you to buy something tomorrow. You go to resell it and you don't even get what you paid for it. You need to have a secondary market for resale. This is what I'm saying, all right? You want it to be liquid when you go to sell it. So it's not going to sit on the market for a year. So once again, you don't buy a $50 million place, buy a $50,000 place or a $200,000 place, one that people can afford and is going to have good value for many, many people, all right? Now, low taxes and holding costs, the taxes can be from the property tax side, but can also be from the rental income side, can also be from the capital gain side when you go to liquidate the property. Make sure about that. It needs to be easily accessible. There's no point in having it in Antarctica and you can't get to it or something like that. You want to have it in a place that you can easily get to lots of connecting flights, easy to drive there, not going to be snowed in, not going to be at the top of a mountain with landslides and you can't access it. It's got to be easily accessible. It's got to be safe and secure. It's got to be a quality build and it will be there when you need it. Now, this is a big one for me and for a lot of my clients. It should be in a food, water, and energy independent country. All things that I look at when I am helping clients move to another country. So, I, by the way, we put in lots and lots of fun pictures. Check out this picture. Check out how young I am there. My God, I don't even have a beard or anything like that. I, this is probably, I don't know, I'm, I don't know if I was in my 20s or my 30s, but I went to uh, and did a private tour of a vault. And that, at the time, was probably about a half a million dollars in gold. I could barely lift the thing. It was so heavy. Anyways. Next is wealth protection structures. So as we said, we want to have a landing pad and then we want to um, secure it safely in some type of corporate vehicle. So a corporate structure could be an LLC, an IBC, an SA, an, uh, an LP, a limited partnership, could be any of these types of things. 
could also be in an offshore trust or a foundation or something like that. You might even want to have some type of a parent company, then um, a child company, you know, holding companies, these types of things. I work with a lot of my clients on the structuring of this. All right. So what are some of the, the benefits from structuring it like this? Well, you've got liability protection. That's a big one. You know, the United States is the most litigious country in the world. They have little Sioux factories. They just take lawyers out of uh, law school and they plop them down. And all they do is sue people all day long. Just sue, 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 sue. So you want to make sure that you have some liability protection. You also want to have a bit of privacy and anonymity. All right. By the way, there's privacy and anonymity um, between companies and corporations and individuals and then your government. If you're, the, if you're a U.S. tax person, you, there's a ton of filing requirements. This doesn't stop that. Um, I work with my clients to make sure that we stay compliant and legal on these types of things. I just want to be clear about the privacy. If you're an American tax person, you really got to declare everything. Now, with these structures, you can also look at estate planning, right? Estate planning is extremely important, especially when you start moving offshore and you have assets in many different countries. You want to make sure that your loved ones are going to get those assets, that they don't have to go through probate in multiple um, countries, in different court systems, in different languages, in different legal systems. But estate planning is extremely important. They want to be ta tax optimized. You don't want to get in a surprise tax bill. That's no fun. And then it's legacy planning. You know, I like to work in countries that have perpetuity so that your, your assets can go on forever to, to your heirs. You know, I don't want it to be like, all right, after you, then they take it all and then that's it. That's also no fun. Now, negatives. With anything in life, there is a give and take. And I, I am always very upfront about these things. There are compliance issues, absolutely, when you do structuring, just like we were talking about talking to the U.S. government. Other governments are not quite as aggressive as the U.S. The U.S. really stands out as an aggressive one, but there are compliance issues with these types of things. There's filing requirements and there are costs to them. These are not free. The lawyers don't work for free, but it can be very, very worthwhile. Okay, next is a free flow of capital, all right? This is what we've described before. So this would be things like offshore bank accounts, international brokerage accounts, precious metal accounts, crypto accounts, all right? We've seen Bitcoin moon over the last couple of weeks, yeah? Having crypto accounts, being able to have an on-ramp and an off-ramp, that's free flow of capital. You can have merchant accounts, so to be able to accept payments, credit cards, PayPal, Stripe, these types of things. There's other merchant accounts out there. You can have APIs on them for your website, if you take any type of online business, POS, the point of sale types of things. You know, I help all of my clients with these things. There's online wallets, there's multiple currency accounts. So it's not just about only being in Canadian dollars or only being in US dollars. What about some Swiss francs? What about some of the Middle Eastern currencies? What about some of the stuff from the Cayman Islands? You know, there's lots of different currencies in there. You can have a multi-currency account, that's pretty good, you know, that can help you navigate with a lot of this inflation. We talked about the capital controls. I don't go, to go over that again. It's, but it is the ability to access that capital. There's no point in just having it and then you can't do anything with it. You know, we need access to capital as well. Now we need to understand the costs involved because when you start working in the offshore space, it's not free. You're not opening a bank account for $0 with $0 down. You can have 53 cents in it. No, usually there's going to be some type of an opening balance, but that's okay. You know, you want to put your money into these types of structures. Now we need to look at the stability of the institution, right? We can't just take responsibility and push it onto the government and be like, well, they have FDI insurance and that's going to be enough. And I'm going to make sure that if anything happens, I get my money back. Well, there's limits to that. And there's cases that it hasn't worked. And then there's bail-ins and there's a whole bunch of other things. So we need to have personal responsibility and look at the stability of that institution. You know, with my business, with my uh, my clients, we're looking at the at the bank itself. We're looking at the balance sheet. We're reading their balance sheet and looking at their capitalization ratio. I have banks that I work with which have 20 plus capitalization rate. Back home, it might be like 4% or something like that. We have really highly capitalized banks that we work with. That means they don't take on risky loans and a lot of damaging things on there. Now, 
The documents required when opening one of these accounts is very different than back home. There's a lot of extra paperwork that goes into it, but usually we can help shortcut these things because we have a lot of experience. So I make sure to help people with that. And then it's a return on capital. I've got CDs and long-term deposits and stuff I'm helping clients with that are paying over 6% annually on these things, you know, 6, 6.2, 6.5% by holding your money in one of these more capitalized banks. So you get a higher rate of return and it's a safer bank. I think that's pretty awesome personally. All right. Now, proper tax planning. I'm not going to be talking about individual countries in this section or giving you tax advice. Actually, let's just make a disclaimer. Everything that we're talking about today is for your educational purposes only, all right? I'm not giving individual tax, legal, marketing, financial, any type of advice. I'm just explaining to you what goes into a comprehensive plan B plan, okay? So with the caveat out of the way, let's continue. Work with only whitelisted strategies, all right? You know, there's the dirty dozen on the IRS website of all kinds of dodgy stuff that people do. Don't mess around in that place, okay? I've gone and read them. I've seen them. I've studied this some really, really dodgy stuff. Let's work on the legal side of things because if you don't work on the legal side of the tax, then you could actually end up losing your freedom. And all of my work is about getting more freedom, not less, all right? Super, super, super important, more freedom. So work with licensed professional that can sign off on the work. That's what I do. You know, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not an accountant or a CPA or anything like that. I don't play one on television, right? I, I'm very upfront that I am not a lawyer, okay? But what I do is I work side by side with the lawyers, all right? I work side by side with them, partner with them, and, and have them go through and sign off on all of the work. Whoever you work with, make sure they really know what they're talking about, okay? This is not something to skimp on. You want to work with pros. And you want to focus on the goals and the objectives. Not all, not everyone's goals and objectives are exactly the same. Same with tax planning. Everybody has different types of situations. So what makes sense for me is not going to make sense for you. Make sure that the professional, whether that be me or anyone else that you decide to work with, make sure they understand these things. Be willing to make a change. You know, I think that's a really important one. People want to have all this stuff, but they're not willing to give up anything else. There is always a cost to things in life. So make sure you understand this. Understand the options available. You know, Understand what is out there. Have a full view of the landscape. Work with someone who's creative in this space and can give you lots of ideas and brainstorm it, okay? Follow the laws of your and your obligations and choose a place with a more favorable tax system. This is as I was saying before. I focus on tax-free or low-tax countries. Okay. We're going real fast through these, all right? So freedom of movement, as I said, we're going to want to have freedom of movement inside of a country, but we want to have a freedom of movement between countries. So let's talk a little bit about the lexicon. All right. So let's say you leave the US or you leave Canada or, or Germany or Spain or New Zealand or whatever, and you get on an airplane and you go to another country. You're going to go through immigration. You're going to flash your passport. They're going to take a look and they're going to stamp it assuming you have a visa to enter that country. That visa is most likely a tourist visa. It gives you 30, 60, maybe 90 days to reside in that country, to be in that country as a tourist. But it doesn't give you the legal right to live there full time or work there or do any of those types of things. After a certain period of time, they're going to kick you out. They're going to say, you got to go. And if you overstay your visa, there can be fines. There can be a ton of problems. You can get blackballed from a country. You got to be really, really careful. So you want to have the legal right to live and work in that country. So the next one after a tourist visa is a temporary residency, all right? A temporary residency, you can think of like a student visa, domestic help visa, um, a working holiday visa, something that has a short defined period of time, six months, a year, two years, something like that. But after that, once again, you got to go. The one after that that I focus on is called a permanent residency. That means that you have the legal right to be in that country forever. Now, there's going to be some criteria that might be a investment in the country. It might mean a minimum amount of time in the country, which could be a, a day, a week, a month, or six months. Every country is completely different, right? So we've got the tourist visa, the temporary visa, the permanent residence visa, and then we have the citizenship, all right? The next one on here, the citizenship. So citizenship is when you can actually say, like, I am Brazilian, or I am Chilean, or I am Mexican, right? 
This is going to give you the legal right to live and work in the country, just like a permanent residency. But in addition to that, you're going to have three additional things. All right. One I really like and two I don't care about at all. All right. The two that I don't care about are the ability to vote, the legal right to vote in the country. If you go in for that democracy type of thing, which I think is a bit of a sham these days that I think we all know and understand. It's just Democracy is not what it used to be, unfortunately. The other one is participating in the armed services. Once again, not for me. I would not be doing something like that, but everybody is entitled to their own thoughts and beliefs on these things. The third one I do like very much, it's the passport, all right? A passport is just like a driver's license, but instead of giving you access, the legal right to enter the motorway, it gives you the legal right to go between borders. It's the agreement between the country of the citizenship that you have and other countries out there, all right? It's that agreement, it's that di uh, diplomacy that gives you that piece of paper, that passport, that shows that you have the legal right to enter that country, okay? This is what we're talking about when we're talking about a plan B. You need the freedom of movement. And the one that ties it all together is the lifestyle. All right. The lifestyle is super, super important. I want you guys to have fun. I want you to have an amazing life. I'm a super upbeat person. I really, I understand what's going on in the world. I know there's like a ton of darkness out there, but I don't want to be piling on the darkness. I really don't. I want to be the light at the end of the tile. I want to be there to help you guys, to inspire you, to work with you and show you that there are real life solutions on these things. So once we go through this process, we want to make sure that we match it up with your lifestyle, right? There's nothing better than having an amazing life, drinking some nice wine, spending time with your family, doing the things that you want. So the lifestyle, once, I, once again, we want to make sure that it's easy to get in and out. Like if you have elderly parents or you got kids or you got siblings or something like that you need to visit, you want to be able to go back and forth from your home country and your new country, right? You don't want it, um, you know, you're from the US and then your plan B is in the Philippines or something like that. And it takes you 36 hours to get there. Well, that's no fun. That means you're going to go back once a year or maybe once every two years. That's not great. But if it's down in the Caribbean or in Central America or Latin America, maybe it's a three hour flight or four hour flight. You can go back every couple of months. You know, it's super easy, super cheap. You're not going to be jet lagged. It's fantastic. I'm from Southwestern Ontario. Okay. So climate is kind of a big one for me. I grew up with about four feet of snow in the winter. It's about six months of the year, seven months of the year is really, really crummy weather. So not only are you paying 50% of your money in taxes, you're given 50% or six months of your wages to Justin Castro and his cronies, but you also have to deal with three feet of snow. That makes me want to vomit. I want out of there. Okay. I want sunshine and blue skies, white fluffy clouds, you know, I think climate's really, really important. And then it's your activities. What are you going to do with your free time? Are you going to go cycling? Are you going to go surfing, kiteboarding? Are you going to play pickleball? What do you want to do? Does the country have those activities for you? I also think that a value system is really important. You know, back home, it's a lot of keeping up with the Joneses, right? Personally, I don't really like that. I'm very well to do. I have a lot of money, but I don't need to flaunt it. I don't think that that's a really good thing at all. You know, I don't care about having the biggest and the best of everything. I'd rather live in a place like Latin America, which is really for, uh, family oriented, right? I think that's a much nicer type of value system where family always comes first, where you get to spend a lot of time with your spouse or your kids or your parents, or your friends. You know, I think that's really, really good. And then it's the standard of living. You know, what kind of things do they have in the country? Do they have good infrastructure? Do they have good malls and restaurants and food? You know, all the things that make life really, really fun. We need to make sure that's got good healthcare just in case something happens. You know, down here in Panama, where I live, there's a John Hopkins hospital not that far away. Uh, you know, it's nice to know that there's a really excellent hospital just in case. The language, you know, in Latin America, it's Spanish speaking. Great. I would rather live in a country where I can learn the local language than be in a country where it's just going to be unbelievably difficult to learn the language. I think learning another language is fun. If you have kids, then it's going to be schooling. Or if you want to change careers and you want to go back to school, you might want to be thinking of these. I'm sure I could have brainstormed 250 things here, but I just picked a couple of the big ones. Oh. We got another slide here. Okay, let's go through these ones quickly. So the infrastructure, I mentioned that safety, of course, super important. You don't want to move to a country that has no safety. Good social life, friends, family, et cetera. Food, nice restaurants. I love to eat. I go crazy for eating. My clients are in town. 
I met with clients, I don't know, three, four days a week at really, really fantastic restaurants. We've got a list of like 20 places we love to go to. So it's amazing. Stability, stability of the government, stability of the people, access to goods and services, cost of living, et cetera, et cetera. I think you guys get the point. So we did pretty good. I was thinking I would do that section in 30 minutes. We're at the 29 minute mark. So I did pretty good on that one. So as promised, I have detailed a very comprehensive ex explanation of what exactly goes into a perfect plan B. But how do you put it all together, right? How do you put all of the pieces together in this, right? Well, I kind of sat there and I thought out, you know, three options, all right, all right? Three main options. Well, option one is you can study for thousands of hours. You can mentor with the best professionals in the world and travel around the globe to explore. You can build personal relationships and do massive amounts of expensive trial and error. These are the things that I did, and it took me nearly 25 years to get here, all right? That is exactly my formula for it. That's a 25-year plan. But you have to think, it's possible. I mean, you guys can absolutely do this. If this is all you do and you focus all of your time and energy and effort on these types of things, it is possible. But what is your time worth, right? Think about what you bill at. If you're a dentist or a doctor, a lawyer, accountant, financial planner, if you own a business, a brick and mortar and an online, you know, what is your time worth to you? If something can be shortcutted, you know, is that valuable to you? I reckon it probably is. Also consider what are mistakes going to cost you, right? Make sure that if you make a mistake on these things, that it's not going to have dire consequences. You're not going to waste hundreds of thousands of dollars. I have made lots of mistakes in my life going through these types of things. I continue to make mistakes, but you know what? I make mistakes with my own portfolio because it's part of my business, right? I get to make those mistakes so you don't have to make those mistakes. I get clients all the time. They're like, oh, I heard what happened with you in this country. I heard what happened with you in that country. That's because I'm a guinea pig. I go out there and I test these types of things, right? And it's for me. It's like if you're a carpenter, you have to have a hammer. You have to have a screwdriver, right? If you're a hairdresser, you have to have scissors and, uh, and what's this thing? Um, I don't know, a razor, a bra you know, these types of things. You have to have your tools, right? You have to go through, you have to practice these things. It's exactly what I do. Now, the last one on this is, do you have enough time until the world falls apart? You know, I don't think it's any secret what's happening in the world right now. Do you have the time to go through this? So that's option one, all right? Study, 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 work with the best professionals build the relationships, massive amounts of trial and error. Okay, what is option two? I think this is a pretty good one. This is a really good one. You can work one-on-one -on -one with me, all right? I take on private clients. This is what I do for a living, nine hours a day, five days a week. I am there helping clients go through this, all right? Now, to do this, you just go to expatmoney.com, top right-hand corner, you'll see a big orange button. It says, work with us, all right? Click on that. There's a huge sales letter there. It's a, it's a letter for you to read, all right? Don't read it on your phone. It's gonna take you too long. Read it on a laptop, go through it. To be transparent, I only work with clients with a million, uh, $2 million or more net worth. So if you don't fit into that, don't worry, we've got another option for you. But if you're above 2 million, then I definitely encourage you to go and do that. At the bottom of the page, you can fill out an application to work with me. We're gonna take a qualifying call to see if it's a good fit, if we like each other, if I can help you, if I'm willing to help you, then we will go through that on a call together. Once again, transparency, I only work with probably about one in 10 people who apply to work with me. I'm super, super picky. I'm in a good financial position. I don't have to say yes to everybody. I want to work with cool people. I want to work with people that I enjoy because it's my life too. If I'm doing this nine hours a day, you better believe it's going to be with people that I really enjoy. My fees start at 25,000 US and go up from there. All right. That's a consulting package. We go through it for a year. We start at 25,000 for a normal family. If it's a really complex or difficult case, it can go up for there. But most clients right now are 25K. We're probably going to 30, 35K this year, all right? So that's option two. Option one is do it yourself. Option two is work with me. Now, let's say that you don't have $2 million or more and you want a different option. Okay, I've got an option for you, but it's going to take me about 
10 minutes to explain this alternative option for you, all right? And it's not going to require you to take a bunch of risks, all right? You don't have to fly to every country in the world or anything like that. And it's not going to take you thousands of hours of study. It's not even going to cost you 25000 It's a lot more affordable than this. It is a special offer and one that does require a small investment. But, all right, warning here. If you don't like being sold to or think that you're entitled to my life's work for free, then please, I hope you guys got amazing value from the first half of this presentation. I wanted to really go and detail for you what goes into a plan B plan, all right? But if you don't like being sold to or think that you're entitled to everything for free, then just go ahead and exit out of the presentation tonight. It's okay, all right? This is really for smart, appreciative individuals who recognize and appreciate specialized knowledge and research and can understand the immense value and importance of what we are discussing here today, all right? So today, after eight months of the doors being closed, I am super, super, super thrilled to announce that I am reopening the hub, all right? This is our closed end membership program, all right? You guys might remember from last June, we opened this up. We had tons of people come in. It was like a beta launch of it. We really were just getting going on these types of things. We've figured it all out. It's been amazing. We've had amazing relationships. So really, it is a combination of in-person live events, exclusive research, and curated deals, and potentially extremely lucrative opportunities, I might add. It is filled with networking community of successful, like-minded individuals. And you're going to get a chance to meet my insider circle of lawyers, accountants, executives, influential families, service providers, my friends, and a network of trusted professionals, all right? These people participate in the Hub membership, all right? So I want to go through it with you, everything that is included in this. I want it to be super, super clear, all right? So benefit number one private members only exploration and investing excursion these are a max of 25 people each we usually do these on a quarterly basis here's a picture of me taking down the clients to uruguay last year we've done uruguay a couple of times this year in 2024 we're going to be doing two trips to panama a trip to paraguay a trip to colombia and then possibly a trip to brazil or turkey or maybe even uruguay again we're going to see what people are after but this is something that i actually participate in so every breakfast lunch and dinner for a week we're going to get to hang out we're going to get to mastermind you can tell me about your situation your taxes we can work through everything on these trips we're going to go and do our due diligence on the the deals together you're going to see how i work you're going to meet all these amazing people all right this is an in-person trip, but it is only available to private clients and hub members. General public does not get to come on these types of things. Max of 25 people. So this is not some big dumb conference where you just listen to someone speak at you. No, it's super interactive. Lots of Q&A. You really get to do cool things. And every year we go to different countries, all right? So even when you become a hub member, it's not like you're going to go through the hub membership for one year, and then that's it. It'll all be done. No, every quarter we're going to be going to different destinations. So if you'd like to travel, if you like to explore as much as I do, then you're going to get to see all these new cool places. Okay. Number two, benefit number two, private members only field trips. The one I just described are going to be these big week long trips. The field trips are like little one day things. We're going to go and visit a gold vault or we're going to go visit a mine, or we're going to go visit um, some type of investment project, all right? We're going to go as a group. These are usually located here in Panama, where I'm based, but because I travel around the world, that sometimes I host these in countries that I'm traveling with. We also do a lot of like last minute meetups. You know, you'll hear a couple of weeks in advance and it'll be a meetup. Let's go for cocktails. Let's go for drinks. Let's go move, meet this person. Same type of thing as people fly into a country to come and visit me. Some of the lawyers or service providers or authors or business owners, I invite them for lunch. You can come and join us. 
And you get to listen to them speak and meet them face to face, shake their hand, start building out your own network of these people. So these members only field trips are a ton of fun. This is me taking the group through the airport in Tucumán Airport down to Uruguay. So we actually went to the business class lounge. I paid for everybody to come in the business class lounge. We all flew down as a group. I think there was about 26 of us on that trip. And it was just so much fun. Okay, benefit number three, annual in-person celebrations. You can see this is not just a boring online membership. We have an online um, component, but we have an in-person component. So every year we do an in-person celebration with tons and tons of people, you know, open bar and lots of cool things going on. This is one from last year, the picture. I think it was pretty late at night. We might have had a couple of beverages, so I might be a bit inebriated in that picture. Too funny. Number four, free upgrades to special VIP status at all public events, all right? Going into 2025, we're going to be doing in-person larger conferences, 100 people, 200 people, 500 people at these events. We're going to have special lanyards for you, special seating, special VIP break rooms. You're going to meet the speakers. You're going to get to know everybody. You'll have um, the lanyard will identify you so people know that you are a hub member, all right? The staff is going to take extra special care of you. You're going to be invited to special dinners and cocktail hours, a ton of extra things and on this VIP status. All right, number five, access to our private, secure, member, members-only social media platform. It's not Twitter. It's not Facebook. It's none of those big tech companies. It's a private one that's only access to private clients and hub members. It's a good place that you can interact with people on a daily or weekly basis. We do matchups. We've got a conspiracy hour, happy hour that we run every Thursday. My staff are on there. So people go on and chit chat after work, have a quick beer, you know, come on for half an hour, visit, see what's going on in the world, some of the news. There's tons of extra announcements. There's just lots of things. It's basically a forum style. If you remember the old forum style where you can pose a question and then everybody else can come in and answer questions on it, it's like that. So we've got topics. It's all set up in the hub is based on an airline hub. That's the idea. So we've got a business class membership and the business class lounge. We've got the departures hall, which is all of the countries that people are leaving from Canada, US, uh, New Zealand, Australia, Germany, Spain, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the departure hall. That deals with all the tax issues of leaving those countries. And then we've got the arrivals hall in that same thematic idea. We've got the arrivals hall. So in there, we've got Mexico and Panama and Costa Rica and Belize and Nicaragua, Colombia and Panama and Argentina and uh, Portugal and Italy and Turkey and Thailand and all of these different countries that are listed there. And that's for people who are coming into that country to network and make friends. So you have a social circle when you get in there. How amazing is that? Like that is just so rad. It's available on both mobile and on your laptop or your desktop. So you can access it anytime you want. Benefit six is a huge video library packed with a gold mine of valuable global diversification. Intel, this is valued at at least $10,000. Now, how do I know that? Because I get flown around the world to speak on stage. They usually are paying for my airfare. They're paying for my hotel, my food for a few days. Sometimes I'm getting a check, a speaker's fee. We record a lot of these presentations. We put them all in there. They're not available for the general public. This is all password protected. Okay, so there's tons of additional content on there. Hundreds, probably over 100 hours of special video content that you won't find anywhere else. Benefit seven is exclusive access to our growing special reports library. Every single month, we're putting out a new special report, sometimes even two. So you can see about crypto, about gold, about self-directed IRAs, how to access that to buy real estate overseas. You can talk, we have some talking about the citizenship by investment. We have a financial review. We've got what's going on with, with filing requirements. These are just a couple of them that we've put out in the last few months, but there's so many more. And every single month we keep adding to these. So there's so much in there for you to access. This stuff you can't find anywhere else, all right? I have a full-time research department, all right? I have two full-time staff. That's all they do is research 40, 40 hours a week nonstop just research for us, finding out things, calling up banks, calling up different institutions, um, all these things. Then on top of that, we just hired a new lawyer. 
all day long. He's driving around banks in Panama, just meeting with the heads of the banks, fi figuring out what their capitalization is rate is like, what it's like to open up a foundation bank account, a corporate bank account, what is needed, building the relationships. We have a new banking report coming out about Panama, as well as one about offshore banking in general, with probably over 100 offshore bank accounts. You will see 2024 is the year of banking. One of the biggest, most important things that you guys can do is make sure that you are set up properly with multiple bank accounts. We are taking this seriously. I'm spending tens of thousands of dollars on this, making sure you have the best intel, all right? You can't just Google these types of things. You actually have to meet with the bankers and discuss it. You have to get on the phone, take calls, Zoom calls, meet them. I was just had um, a, a meeting the other day on Tuesday or something like that, Tuesday or Monday or Tuesday, I had a meeting with one of the private bankers here. She's the vice president of um, VIP banking, of boutique banking here. And we sat and we talked about things and she spoke to some of my clients, gave a presentation. That kind of thing is only available for members of the hub. All right. Now, you're going to get early bird access to podcasts, interviews, and other special content, all right? A lot of times, we're doing these things well in advance. We have stuff that doesn't get published. You're going to get access to it first. So if there's any type of deals that we pr uh, promote on there, you get access to them before anyone else. Sometimes these things are sold out before anyone else even hears about it. So that's super important. Benefit number nine, exclusive members-only webinars. These are monthly webinars that we're doing, all right? They are coming out where we're bringing on a lot of my professionals, the bankers, the precious metal depositories, the CEOs of companies, service providers, lawyers, and they're giving really in-depth one, two, three-hour webinars and workshops. We do huge Q&As, and you get to ask your questions, all right? Really, really high-value stuff, things you're not going to find anywhere else. Okay. Almost through this. Benefit number 10, members only emergency bulletins delivered right into your inbox. So what ends up happening is because I'm so well connected, because I have so many friends and colleagues that I work with, I get so much intel that is not made public. As soon as I find out about something, I don't care if it's two o'clock in the morning, I get this information. I'm going to message my staff. We're going to write it up. We're going to send it in. You'll have it first thing in your morning. All right. So I've saved people hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right. Hundreds of thousands of dollars by letting them know about government project changes before anyone else knew about it. So I, I remember one of them was it went from a $5,000 bank deposit to a $200,000 real estate investment. And that 5,000, after a month, you can withdraw that money. So now people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, but the people who listened to me got in for only $5,000. Another program, the, the price was $250,000 to get a citizenship. And I knew in advance that it was gonna go up to 400,000. And I helped my clients to get it beforehand, a whole bunch of clients. Okay. And it doesn't end there. Let's just check. All right. When you sign up tonight, what I want to do is I want to extend to you a special offer. This is the Expat Life Masterclass Series. It is a fully uh, fledged course that we are doing right now. This retails for $497, all right? But I'm going to give it to you free when you act tonight. So I want to quickly recap all of the benefits that you receive when you accept this special invitation to join the hub today. So benefit number one, members only exploration and investment excursions, private members only field trips, annual in-person celebrations. You're going to get free upgrades to special VIP status at all public events. You're going to have access to our private secure members only social media platform. And we're going to have a huge video library packed with a gold mine of valuable global diversification intel. You're going to have exclusive access to our growing special report library, new ones coming out every month, as well as all of our back issues of this. You're going to get early bird access to podcasts, interviews, and also other special content and exclusive members-only webinars. Plus, you're going to have members-only emergency bulletins that are delivered to your inbox as soon as we get them. And as I said before, bonus, when you sign up with me today, you're going to get the Expat Life Masterclass Series. This normally retails for $497. Quickly, I'll show you what the modules in include. You know, my work is focused on the immigration and the tax and the um, the investing side of things. This course is about the lifestyle. So we talk about the health. We talk about travel and insurance, healthcare and self-insuring. We talk about doctors and telemedicine, dentistry, the dentists and the pharmacy and the drugs, staying healthy, all kinds of these things. 
We're going to be talking about money, credit cards, points, frequent flyers, miles, banks, cash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Module three, we de- dig into relationships, both friendship and romance. We talk about culture and events. We talk about kids, hobbies, where you can form these relationships, languages, more and more and more. We talk about leaving, so clearing out the house, packing, pets, leaving your house, saying goodbye, masalam. <laughs> We talk about moving in. We talk about Amazon freight forwarding and getting shopping done and all of these types of things. It's all included in the Expat Life Masterclass series. We're going to talk about safety, statistics, and the techniques and self-defense, how to get a firearm. If you want to have a firearm, a handgun, or a rifle, how to get those in the new country that you live in. We talk about the safety for single females and driving safety and cross border, crossing borders. We talk about the food safety, personal responsibility, where to get the information. So more and more and more and more. There's just like, It's unbelievable. It is a full course on how to be an expat, how to actually live your life in one of these countries. This is retailing right now for $497. I'm going to give it to you for free. So what would it be worth to you to know that your family is out of harm's way, right? That is the question. That the wealth that you have built up will be protected. That greedy, unjust governments can't just come and confiscate what's yours. That when they collapse the economy, your won't your money won't just go up, up in smoke. It's not just going to become worthless, right? Really think. I want you to think. If you had an answer to these types of things, what would it be worth to you? Well, I would like to personally invo- invite you to join the hub. It's our exclusive members-only program. It's only 1,997 U.S., annually, okay? 1997 annually, all right? All you have to do to sign up is go to expatmoney.com forward slash go, all right? expatmoney.com forward slash go. So next steps, when you go to the link, you will read a page detailing all the amazing benefits we talked about tonight. At the bottom of the page, there'll be a link to a checkout. Once you sign up, you will receive your login information and can start your journey immediately. You will get an instant access to all of the benefits and bonuses that we discussed tonight. And you will receive invitations to join me in person for exclusive members-only events and trips. All you have to do is visit expatmoney.com forward slash go. All right. Feel free to hop over there right now, expatmoney.com forward slash go. So consider this. All right. Is 2024 the year you decide to take this seriously? All right. They have made it abundantly clear that they are coming from everything you have worked so hard for in your life. They're coming for all of it. They are. You have to consider this. You have to think this through. Are you going to let them have it? Are you, or are you going to protect what is yours? All you have to do is visit expatmoney.com forward slash go. So join me and other smart, successful individuals inside the hub. Doors close January 31st, 2024 at midnight at the latest. Why do I say at the latest? Well, I have a goal. I have a, I have a, a number in my head of how many people I want to join in this journey. Now, the invitation to tonight's presentation went out to, I don't know, 20 some odd thousand people. All right. We have hundreds, if not a thousand people who are joining me tonight on this presentation. And I'm only going to be allowing a small amount of people in. Why? Because I don't want a million people in this membership site. This is something I actually participate in. I'm actually in there responding to comments, answering questions. My main work is working with the the high net worth families. All right. My private clients have access to the hub membership. All right. They're in there. They get access to these types of things. And I need to make sure that I allow myself enough time to help my private clients. They are super, super important to me. And I want to make sure that I give you the most amount of time possible as well as a hub member. That means that at the very, very latest, I will be closing it down January 31st, 2024. But if I hit that number, I'm going to close the doors early just to be transparent with you. I might open it back up at the end of this year. Very doubtful. I might just close it down forever and just 
only take care of the people that are in there and only grow with private clients. Maybe the only way to access this going forwards after this opening will be to pay the 25,000, which probably by that point will be 30, 35, $40,000 to work with me. So I highly suggest you take me up on this offer today if this makes sense for you. If you're a cool individual, if you want to work with other cool people, then go to expatmoney.com forward slash go. Thanks, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. Why don't you guys go ahead to the Q&A? We're not going to do a big Q&A, but I want to know, is this exciting? Are you guys as pumped about this as I am? Are you guys excited to come on the trips and make 2024 the year that you get your plan B sorted, that you get help, that everything gets done? And then you can think, you know, like you're not going to be having this stress and this anxiety. You're not going to be worried all of the time, staring at the ceiling and losing sleep. Is 2024 the year that we're going to get this sorted? Work through it together. Get the best intel. Make sure that everything is done and done correctly. Let me know if this is something that you are really excited about. All right. Okay. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Oh, I love this part of it. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, there's some questions in here. Um, Okay, I'm not going to get to all the questions, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I see the response is really, really fantastic. Um, if you guys want to participate in this, go to expatmoney.com forward slash go. Thank you so much for your time tonight. I hope you guys have a fantastic one and I will see you inside of the hub. Okay, thanks so much.